Hey guys, it's Sandeep from Rev Atlas and welcome back to yet another review and today we're going to be discussing something quite a bit different and it'll be largely just me explaining how a certain thing is possible. So on the internet there are now several samples that are being posted on how the OnePlus 8 Pro is able to capture certain objects uh, as transparent or uh, you know as different as what you can see compared to your naked eye. So even if an object is black or completely opaque, it's still able to capture an object that is transparent in its photos using the color filter camera that it has. So how is it able to do this? That's exactly what we're going to talk about in this video. Now, before we get started, please do make sure to hit the subscribe button and also turn on notifications for more videos like this. Now, let's begin. Now, before you can understand how the OnePlus 8 Pro is... I now, before we get into the specifics of how the OnePlus 8 Pro is able to do this by capturing transparent objects when they're actually black or opaque, we need to first discuss about how light works and how the human eye perceives light. So typical light, which is often termed as visible light, is something that the human eye can see. So this is something that ranges from 380 nanometers to 720 nanometers. So this is called visible light and this is what most humans can see. Now, just because humans can see the light that ranges from 380 to 720 does not mean that there is no other form of light or that other forms of light do not exist. It's just simple fact that we cannot perceive that light or we are not able to detect it with our eyes. Now, a simple explanation with this in relation to sound would be that we have a frequency range of 20 hertz to 20 kilohertz in our ears and anything that's below or above it cannot actually be heard by us. This is why there are certain whistles which are called dog whistles and dogs can basically hear this because their hearing is much better than humans but uh, the human ear can't really hear anything at all. So while we blow it, it may seem completely silent to us but that's only because its frequency range is over 40,000 hertz or, or around that range where it's almost impossible or downright impossible for the human ear to make any sense of that sound whatsoever. So it's completely inaudible because we don't have the sort of receptors in our ear to identify and pick up that particular sound. Essentially, all the light that is emitted is actually a form of electromagnetic radiation in the sense that the visible light that we can see is also electromagnetic radiation. So there is other forms of light apart from this, including gamma rays, X-rays, uh, microwaves, radio waves, infrared light and UV light. So all these light sources and light types of light are basically invisible to the human eye. For example, the radio waves that are used to power off smartphones actually can be visible if you have the equipment that can capture that properly. Same thing goes for X-ray. We cannot see uh, light in that particular spectrum, but X-ray machines are used both at airports, in medical institutions, etc. to capture uh, things that are not feasible uh, using the human eye. So these things all make use of light or different wavelengths of light in order to capture information that is otherwise invisible to the human eye or invisible to the naked eye. So another way to look at it is if you have a person or if you have five people in a group out of which all of them are color blind to the color orange and there's just one person who is added to the group who actually can see an orange in the perfect orange color. So to these five group of people, it may seem like the orange is completely different color, but that sixth person knows that the orange is actually orange and he can see it as orange. But because the other people don't have the receptors in their eye to see the orange color as it is, they are not able to see it in that perfect color. So a person who's colorblind to the color orange may not ever be able to see that particular color in the true sense that it is. So what happens is basically you have objects and uh, you know you you have two types of objects or two types of sources of light you either have sources of light like this monitor screen here you have bulbs you have tubes uh, you have your phone screen as well which is again a source of light and all these are self-emitting so they emit light directly into your eyes in the receptors and that is the sort of light that is registered in your mind or in your brain but there's also another set of uh, colors or lights that happens uh, when it when light uh, hits and bounces off objects. For example, if you have, um, say, a phone, say this phone, this Pixel 4XL, to all of us, it appears as if this is white. And the reason that it appears white is because light hits it, it bounces off it, it comes into our eyes and it's registered as being white. 
Now this is true for the visible light spectrum. But if you actually compare this, say to infrared or UV light or any other sources of light, when it hits this object, the amount of light or the type of light uh, it, that is sending back can be very, very different and may not look the same way. So there is a possibility that under specific um, types of light, even this particular Pixel 4 XL may look completely transparent, even though it's not black, even though it's not transparent, and even though it's completely opaque. So it all depends on the properties of the object itself. I had actually done a thread on Twitter which explains uh, how infrared light or capturing IR light is very different from capturing regular photography. So what it does is generally your smartphone cameras or any camera for that matter has an IR filter uh, or a filter that blocks harmful light such as IR, UV and all these other forms of light from entering uh, the camera sensor in order to preserve the actual color details and in order to prevent overheating and uh, other issues. So there is the other way that you can do it where you actually screw on a filter which is one uh, option or you can actually attach a sensor, I mean a filter directly to a sensor and that blocks all sort of light that's visible and only allows IR light say from 720 to 900 nm that particular light to come into the sensor. Now when that happens it is able to capture light that is otherwise invisible to the naked eye and as a result you get some surreal looking images, something that's very different from what you've ever experienced before. For example, trees look white, uh, the sky looks black, even though it's blue. So the properties of something uh, change the kind of color that it outputs based on the type of light that is reflecting as well. So if we were actually able to see light in its full spectrum, everything that we see around us would be completely different. So in these cases where the OnePlus 8 Pro is able to see um, these opaque or black objects as being transparent, it's only because the surface or the object that has uh, this sort of color is visibly black or visibly opaque. But actually what happens is under that specific light, I'm not sure if it's actually using UV light or infrared light, or what wavelength of light that color filter is capturing, but in that particular wavelength, it is not sending any colored information to the sensor, and as a result, it looks completely transparent. So if it was sending some other color information, you could see that the colors would also change. So in that particular spectrum, the color is not actually, color information is not going back to the sensor, and as, as a result, you can see through it. This is the same way how you can see through bags, you can see through m multiple other things using x-rays, you can see through your bodies, inside uh, your entire body using an x-ray and other kinds of rays. So uh, apart from uh, the OnePlus 8, if this sort of technology does come to other smartphones where we are using color filters, IR filters, whatever it may be, it definitely opens up a world of possibilities for smartphones to capture very different sort of photography, very different sort of videos. And I think that's a very interesting thing to have. And OnePlus is probably right on the money there when they included this here, but it all depends on how they exactly use it to extract the best potential uh, sort of images or uh, content from it. So let's hope we see some interesting applications of that here. You can check out my Twitter link in the description below. Other than that, if you have any questions, please do let me know in the comment section below. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button. See you again in the next one.